Hello gamers and welcome back to another installment of Empire on Deck. My earliest memory of gaming is playing DOS games with my dad. So let's get them running on the deck. First thing we need to do is switch over to desktop mode. Once we're in desktop mode we need to go to the uh, little shopping bag. We need to download two apps. Um, the first app is an app called DOSBox. So just type in DOSBox and get that installed. This is the emulator kind of application that we need to get this running. So that's the one on the screen now. So once that's downloaded and we can get that installed, we also need another app called Flat Seal. So Flat Seal is an application that will allow us access to where we store our DOS ROMs. So once that's installed, that's all good. This is the one on the screen now, it looks like a sellotape um, icon. Now we need to locate where we've stored our ROMs. Now mine are stored on my SD card, so we just need to locate the folder where they are. And once you download those zip files, you need to extract them. So it's just a case of right clicking and extract. And once they're extracted, We've got two ways of installing these ROMs or getting these ROMs to run. First way I'm going to show you is create a new text file. Now call this text file the name of the ROM that you're wanting to play. Uh, one important thing to remember on this is that you need to change the extension to .sh. This, this will allow, allow the system to run this ROM. So we open that up in the text editor and we need to write flat pack without the C run com dot dosbox all lowercase dot dosbox capital D O S B lowercase of X. Then we need to create the link to where this application will run. So if we include some speech marks, we then need to locate where the XEX file is, or the EXE file, apologies. Um, find that and then copy location. Go back to the text editor and paste that in and then save. Once that's saved, the next thing to do is to open up Flat Seal. So go to your start button and just do a search for Flat Seal. Once you've located that, open up the application and then click on DOSBox. Scroll right down to System, I believe it's called, and then you need to add a new folder called forward slash run forward slash media. You can also toggle allow access to all files. I'm going to turn this off for this because we don't need that on once we've set this up correctly. Right, so now we've got the file, we've got the DROMs, we need to add them in Steam. So open up Steam, go to the library, and then click in the bottom left, add new game. Then click browse. Now we need to locate where the ROM file or the S.sh file is. So locate to where you saved that, find it, and then just click OK. Once we've got that, so mine are saved in the DOS folder in the emulation, and then click that, and then click open, and then add to Steam. Once that's added, that will add it into your game list down the left hand column. Um, once you've got it, you click that, and then click launch. Don't worry about the naming convention at the moment, we will tidy that up. So I've, I've clicked this a couple of times and it's not working, so if we just check out the properties, um, just make sure that everything lines up to what we need. Um, then we can also change another couple of things as well. So if we go into change to Proton Experimental and then give that a go and see if that works. It's still not working. So what we need to do is go back to our .sh file. So locate where we save that again. Right click on it and go to properties and then click allow executionable. Now if we go back to that, just change the settings back to the default settings. So turn off the little tick box and then click start. 
this should fire up DOSBox and it should start the game as we need to get, as we'd expect it to work. So I'm just letting this run for a bit just to see if it is working fine. It all appears to be working, which is great news. We have another way of adding this game into our library, which I will show you next. So just let this run through, just make sure it works. If it works in desktop, it's going to work in the game mode as well, which is ideal, really, um, as that's where the majority of Steam Deck owners play their games. Oh, the memory is coming back of seeing these screens. It's, but like I said, my earliest memory is playing DOS games with my dad. And this is, when I got this running, I was quite excited to finally get it sorted. So that's closed, so we've got that all good. The other way of doing it is to locate the .exe file and just load that into Steam itself. So, same process as before, find the icon and add that into Steam. When that is added into Steam, just need to locate where that's saved in the game menu and then click the properties section and in the input or the source, we need to add what we added into that document. So, it would be flat pack space run space com dot dos box all lowercase dot dos box capital d o s b and then add a space after that both ways work um, it's the preference of which one works the way you want it to work ideally for me having the dot sh files is the easier way because you've got the file and if it doesn't work you can go locate that file and amend that file to make it work so as you can see Mario is missing an educational game it's working an absolute dream on the Steam Deck such a powerful console not only for AAA new games but emulation as well I have a few emulations on my deck and that's mainly how I play it for the old retro games so I just let that run through a bit, see if it's working fine and it appears to be working. So let's get that closed down. Let's close down Steam um, and then let's go back to the game mode. So just double click return to game mode and then you should be back over in your game mode. Now, as you can see, there's no imagery, there's no icons. So let's let's get that changed. So we just need to click on that, right click on it give it a couple of times to let it all load in. So this is using um, Decky Loader and one of the applications that allow you to change the artwork. So click on that, and then it will give you a load of options and you can just search which ones you need. Now you can amend this because it's not, it's for some reason it's picked up Mario Pick Cross, which isn't correct. So just rename that to what you, what the game is itself and it will search the database to find what game you're looking for. So Mario is missing. And then just click on the, I clicked on the wrong one here. So this pulls in the Mario is missing, but not the correct one that I wanted. So I just click back into that and just remove the last section of that or just click the Mario is missing. Once we've got that, then we can choose which game icon we like so that it gives it that consistent look and feel on the Steam Deck. So just go through each section, pick which picture you want, which imagery you want, and then you're all good to go. So with the icon, it will ask you if you want to restart the console. I tend to not do that as a start, um, 
just because I like to do it all at once, once I've done the other ones. So do the same for Sensible Soccer. It's relatively foolproof, you can just start typing and then it will auto populate and you can just click that and it pulls in all that information that's located on affiliated with that game. Just gives it that nice kind of feel. Having all the images worked on there as well, which is something I'm quite particular about. Some icons won't be found. Um, that's fine. Just ignore those. And as you can see, they're all in there. So just have a look at the properties, open it up and then just rename it to what the actual game is. So Mario is missing. And then just close that down. And you can see that it now adds it onto your Steam Deck in game mode with the correct name and the correct images as if it was bought through the store. Once you've renamed those and you're happy with the images, let's give it a go and let's see how it runs. And it seems to be working fine which is great. The other thing that you can do with the Steam Deck as well, once you've got these running and loading and all of that, you can change your controller setup to have the keys that would be with these games originally. Some of these are quite difficult to find out what keys do which. It's just a trial and error. Or you can go onto the internet and find the original instruction manual and add the settings and the key binds that way. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe for more gaming content, and leave your thoughts down in the comments. Until next time, happy gaming.